What's happening, guys? Keith here with another Impact Wrestling Review. So I don't know about you guys, but I thoroughly enjoyed the show tonight. I thought they did a good job with continuing stories, building new stories, and the in-ring action was really good, too. So overall, I thought it was a really good show. So let's get into things. So much like we ended last week's show, this week we began with uh, Eli Drake coming out. And uh, he first told us that he gave Scott Steiner the night off so he could be with his freaks. Um, but then, you know, he talks about how last week he was interrupted by Austin Aries and Pentagon Jr. And uh, he says when his time comes, uh, he's going to take that title. And then he puts uh, Pentagon on notice and says, you got one week. So he's calling his shot, just like Babe Ruth. He's going to challenge Pentagon Jr. next week for the Impact World Championship. Pentagon comes out, the two stand off face to face, Eli holding his briefcase up, Pentagon holding the title up, trash talking, and that was the segment. So, you know, that's really what it should have been. You kind of continue what happened at the end of last week right into the beginning of this week. It just flows really well, and I thought it was a good opening segment. So, we go backstage, which apparently this interview happened earlier on in the day with, uh, Mackenzie interviewing Kira Hogan. Uh, Mackenzie asks her about her first pay-per-view match, and Kira responds by saying, you know, even though she lost, she plans on getting her redemption tonight, even if it is over a week late. Um, at this point, Tessa Blanchard walks up and says that she caught her match at the pay-per-view, and it should be her last pay-per-view match. Uh, she, Tessa says that women like Hogan will always be behind women like her. So Kira tells her, why don't you do what you do best and sit down and watch my match. So, I don't know if I would have had this at this point in the show. I think I would have had it. Well, you know what? I'll get into it when we get to that point. So, backstage again, and we see Joseph Park, and up comes Grado. The two, you know, kind of rekindle everything that happened, and uh, they're all buddy-buddy until Austin Aries walks up, and, uh, you know, he, of course, gives his unpleasantries, uh, makes fun of Grado and Park, and then he basically says that he's there just to, you know, s reiterate what he said last week and reassure everyone that everything is going to be fine, and he is still the man in the company, even though Pentagon Jr. has the championship, so they're, they're kind of teetering on that heel Aries thing, but uh, see where it goes. I, I, I like heel Aries, to be honest, but I mean, I'm fine with him just... He could be a face with this guy, a heel with this guy, you know, I'm fine with that too. So up next we have a tag team match with OVE versus KM and Falaba, an odd pairing, but you know, KM wants to make everything right in the world and uh, show Falaba that he has changed um, this match. I wasn't sure the way they were going to book this match at first. I was like, uh oh, are, are Ba and KM going to go over a team that was kind of just thrown together over a you know, a solid tag team like OVE, but uh, that wasn't the case. We did have a point in the match where Falaba hits the steamroller on both Chris brothers, and then KM does it, and then they do it again, and uh, at this point, uh, Ba went into the corner, and KM comes charging at the Chris brothers. They move out of the way. KM inadvertently hits Ba. KM gets thrown out of the ring. Uh, they double-team Ba, and Jake uh, rolls up, Ba for the win, and that was that, and uh, after the match, kind of, uh, KM's a little, a little frustrated, he starts yelling at him, but then he kind of gets his composure, and, you know, shakes his hand, and says that, you know, he just starts smiling awkwardly, it was, it was just like, you know, something's still up, something's, something's going on, we know, we know this isn't how it's gonna be, so we go backstage, and Moose is interviewed by McKenzie, and uh, Moose says, you know, kind of reiterates what he's been talking about, that 2018 is his year, and he will win the world title in 2018. At this point, Jimmy Jacobs comes up and says, you know, the last time somebody called themselves Impact, it didn't work out too well for them. <laughs> Moose grabs Jimmy Jacobs by his coat, I guess, and just lifts him right up. And, uh, you know, he wants to know, what do you want? And Jacobs says, I want you to face Congo Kong next week, so... Apparently that's a match. We don't know what happened with Johnny Impact since we saw that clip of, you know, what happened between Impact and Congo Kong last week, and now I guess he's moving on. I, I wouldn't be surprised, to be honest, if we see a return of Johnny Impact next week to get involved, but 
If not, maybe we'll have a new feud between Moose and Kong. So up next, we have the Taya versus Kira Hogan rematch from Redemption. Um, so Taya started out right as soon as the bell rang, started attacking Kira. She went to work. Then Kira got her licks in, ended up going outside the ring. And I think uh, Taya was standing above the steps, and Kira kind of pushed her head down into the steps. At this point, music plays. Tessa Blanchard comes out. Uh, she comes out and attacks Kira Hogan beating her up outside the ring, throws her in the ring, hits the hammerlock DDT, and stands over her. But, I mean, you could just feel it when Tessa comes out. You know she's she's just a star. She, it just feels like the real deal. She has the it factor, and I, I'm, I'm so glad that Impact was able to sign her because I think she's going to do wonders and help out the knockouts division completely, and it, it's really shaping up where we got a lot going on in that division and a lot that's very intriguing. So... Like I said earlier with the uh, interview that Mackenzie did with Kira Hogan and then Tessa came in and interrupted, I feel like they should have shown that after her attacking her and be like, oh, this is why she attacked her. Because when they showed that clip earlier on, we kind of knew where it was going to go. And, you know, just a little gripe. Then we have a video package of Brian Cage and showing his dominance throughout, well, his tenure in Impact. And we get a four-way match from Australia that Brian Cage was a part of. And uh, I guess this replaced the Global Wrestling Network flashback of the week this week because there was not one. Um, this definitely should be the way that they should be introducing the uh, GWN. You can watch companies from all over the world. Um, and, you know, th what's great about this with, you know, stars in other promotions is that, like, Brian Cage being so dominant, you don't have to have someone on the roster suffer in order to build up Brian Cage. So this did that. Uh, Cage won that match, which it was an entertaining match, and I had no complaints about it being on the show because it served a purpose. So it was good. Uh, up next, we have a six-man tag match. Lucha Rules, um, Aerostar, Drago, Phantasma versus Andrew Everett, Desmond Xavier, and DJZ. Um... This was a hell of a match. Uh, you pretty much got what you expected. Fast pace, high flying, just a lot of fun. We saw a double moonsault from, I believe it was Andrew Everett and DJZ. They both hit the ropes at the same time. It was a really cool spot. Uh, multiple submissions, multiple pin attempts. He kind of had a little bit of everything in this match. Um, it's very similar to the six-man tag that happened at the Lucha vs. Impact Twitch show, uh, like I said, just so much fun, really enjoyable. Everybody looked good. Everybody added to the match. Um, DJZ ended up picking up the victory, hitting Aerostar with the ZDT. After the match, everyone shakes their hands, holds everybody, you know, raises hands in the middle of the ring. So it was good shows. Sportsmanship, I mean, honestly, generally I like to see a reason for matches to happen. However, this match was so much fun that I, I really can't complain about it. So we go backstage, and uh, Aries and Eli Drake bump into each other. Uh, Aries says to Eli that he doesn't blame him wanting to cash in on Pentagon, go after the other world title. Um, Aries says, though, he's going to do something that nobody did for him in his title match, and that's wish Eli Drake luck, because, you know, we know what happens when Austin Aries faces Eli Drake. And Aries finishes with... That isn't an insult, and he goes, eh, you know the rest. Eli was obviously annoyed. It was a good segment. Honestly, what I would like to see is Drake pick up the title, um, just so we can actually have that story between Aries and Drake. The first one that happened was very short, and I think it, it really could be a good match, you know, a good feud to build. It should be what the Alberto El Patron and e and uh, Austin Aries feud was, um, you know, to that caliber where it, it felt like it was a big match. So so we're staying backstage, and we see uh, Falaba and KM together. Uh, KM says that uh, he needs to, f uh, or Falaba needs to follow his ways, and he can change his life for the better. And then all of a sudden we hear a woman scream. We pan to the back. Someone again is laid out with that, little X with the circle logo on top of them, so no idea what that is, just gonna probably continue to, to happen week to week. 
Then we see, I guess we take a look back at last Friday. Eddie Edwards is, I guess, outside of the police station after he was arrested. He's on his cell phone trying to make a call. All of a sudden, you see Tommy Dreamer pull up and tells him to get in, and that was that. Um, what else do we got? Oh, we have the X Division title match. Taiji Ishimori versus the champion, Matt Seidel. Um, not sure why this match happened. Just, you know, not saying he doesn't deserve a title shot, but there was, you know, no reason for a title shot because next week they made a match between, I don't remember who the other three competitors were, but it was Taiji Ishimori as well, and they said the winner is going to get a title match against Matt Seidel. Now, it would have made sense to have a match like that and then have an X Division title match, but hey, whatever is what it is. Put on a good match. Both these men are very capable of that. Uh, both men were unsuccessful hitting their finisher. Uh, Ishimori ends up hitting the double knees on Matt Seidel. He goes up top. Seidel kind of flips him over and then flips him down exactly the same way he did to Petey Williams at Redemption. Holds him down and gets the victory, retains his title. Um, then we go backstage and Dreamer and Eddie Edwards are together. I guess it was backstage. It might have been somewhere else, to be honest. Uh, Dreamer tells Eddie Edwards that he's basically throwing his life away, wasting time, you know, chasing this. Um, and, you know, he's like, you you, you got arrested over this. What, 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 is, what is your plan here? And Edwards is obviously irate at this, and he tells Dreamer that he's not his father. He's a grown man, and he has, to, he has things to do. And that was that. So we're going to continue this. Um, good stuff, you know, I mean... I'm interested to see where it goes. I, a double turn, I mean, isn't out of the realm of possibilities at this point, uh, especially since we don't know what was said between Callahan and Alicia in the hospital last week. So we see Allie and Rosemary backstage. Allie keeps telling Rosemary that she is going to be there for her tonight in her corner, and Rosemary just keeps going, telling her no. Uh, she tells her to promise her that she's not going to come down to the ring, and Allie is just putting up a fight. So we go backstage, or we go to LAX's clubhouse. Santana and Ortiz are obviously irate, flipping out about everything from losing their tag titles to losing the rematch, not knowing where Homicide is, not knowing where Conan is, uh, basically flipping out, saying they're losing everything and they have nothing. And uh, next week they're going to take out their frustrations on Andrew Everett and DJ Z. Um, this match was announced earlier on in the evening, and, you know, just builds up a little to the match. So that moves us to the main event. Uh, Sue Young versus Rosemary. Love what they're doing here. So Rosemary, uh, Sue Young comes out first. Rosemary comes down the entranceway, gets to the bottom of the ramp. Sue Young lunges out of the ring, starts attacking her. The two fight outside. Rosemary's got the upper hand. Uh, Sue Young hits her in the face and then hits her with a panic switch right onto the outside. Uh, at this point, she motions to the back, and we have all the undead bridesmaids come out, carrying that coffin once again. They, you know, drop it. Everyone's attention is on Rosemary. Um, at this point, Allie comes out, attacks Soo Young from behind, and, you know, Soo Young's down. Bridesmaids are just kind of standing there. And at this point, uh, Rosemary is yelling at Allie, telling her, you know, I told you not to come out here. Don't do this. At this point, Sue Young gets back up, instructs the bridesmaids to grab Allie. So as she attacks Rosemary, um, yeah, they get into it back and forth. They kind of battle up the ramp. Um, Sue Young is down. Rosemary goes to grab the kendo stick. She goes to hit Sue Young with it on the ramp. Sue Young hits Rosemary with the red mist. Rosemary goes down. They battle up the ramp. At this point, we're at the top of the ramp, the stage area. Soo Young hits a panic switch off the stage through a table. Just great spot. So Allie is forced to watch this whole thing. Soo Young picks up. Rosemary puts her back onto the ramp. She instructs two of the bridesmaids to come grab Rosemary. They're dragging her down the ramp. Rose Rosemary, you know, out down and out. Allie's still forced to watch. Sue Young grabs Rosemary, throws her in the casket. That's the end of the show. Um, th this is just good stuff. I, I think they're doing a fantastic job with this. Um, 
really looking forward to where this goes. I'm hoping for a casket match. That would be really cool. I don't know if it's ever happened before between two women. Um, and like I said, overall, the show I thought was really good. Another solid week. It flowed really well. It does not feel like a two-hour show. They cram so much in there. It's, it's, it's just good. I'm enjoying it, and I hope you guys are as well. Hope you enjoyed my review, and I will see you guys this weekend for the Impact Report. And until then, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Thanks, guys. Bye.